I mean, look at the way that the next generation forms their views on food today. I mean, look at Instagram. I mean, there is an extent to which the next generation don't want to even eat a meal if they're not going to take a picture of it, right? <laughs> Have you noticed this? I mean, I'm half Chinese, so I, I grew up in a family where you'd spend half the meal taking pictures of the food anyway, so I'm used to this. <laughs> but this is new for everybody else. And there's a whole kind of a, a, kind of a new subculture of food styling that Instagram has transformed. Uh, people like Martha Stewart have discovered this, uh, you know, to their detriment. I don't know if you noticed, a couple of years ago, Martha didn't really get the memo on Instagram. And she was taking these horribly badly lit photos uh, of, of the food she'd made. The point that there was this massive outcry and people said, wow, Martha's been, you know, taking pictures from the kind of HP Lovecraft school of cooking. You know, these terrifying pictures of, um, you know, very badly prepared food. Now she has a food stylist, okay? This has also changed, I think, a number of areas of you know, the way we perceive ourselves as a result of what we eat. And you know, there's this other subculture that's very interesting on Instagram. It's called, you did not eat that. And have you noticed those really annoying pictures you see of people with sometimes you know, these very thin girls with a huge cheeseburger? And you know a second after they took the photo, they just threw it in the bin, right? So there's this whole kind of shaming culture that's also emerged with the next generation, you know, where there actually is a new hashtag where they shame people who clearly are not eating the food they're posing with. So it's quite intriguing from an anthropological perspective the kind of intersections already you're seeing with smartphones and food perception. But it's also changing the way that we eat. Uh, last year, uh, there was a very interesting anonymous post uh, on Craigslist where this restaurant, uh, ostensibly in midtown Manhattan, were facing incredible criticism on Yelp about how slow their service had gotten. So, you know, they hired a company to investigate and they said, listen, figure out why uh, we're not as effective as we used to be. So this post appeared, and in the post they said that when they hired this company, they realized they had this old security footage from 10 years ago. So they compared the security footage of what the waiters were doing and how the guests were behaving in 2004 versus 2014. Now they worked out in 2004, the average meal took about an hour, okay? They had quite a high turnover. But in 2014, there were new things happening because of smartphones. You see, they worked out that people, as soon as the food arrived, spent an inordinate amount of time taking pictures of the food, right? This meant the food got cold. So they then sent the food back to get reheated. Meanwhile, they were asking the waiter to take pictures of everyone on the table, and they also weren't ordering very quickly because they were on, on phones talking to other people. As a result of all of these wonderful distractions, the average meal was now two hours rather than one hour. It could be totally apocryphal. But it is a sign that the behaviors on the consumers have already started to shift. And if it makes us feel uncomfortable that our restaurants are tracking our behavior, we should better get used to it. Because we're now living in a world as consumers where not just restaurants, supermarkets, but the very products we buy will be paying more attention to us.